let's say hello to Jared Flash Gordon. Hello, Jared. How are you? Thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. No problem. I'm doing well. How are you? Um, well, how, honestly, you know, you, you see people and you say, how are you? And they say, I'm doing well. And then you walk by and you hope that they don't say more, but I'm actually genuinely curious how you are doing in the aftermath of all this. How do you feel about it all? How are you handling it? I mean, obviously I'm pissed off and bitter, salty about the decision, but you know, I could take a lot from this and turn it into something better and bigger. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, you know, I'm getting more attention now than I ever I've received in the past. Biggest spot on a card against, you know, high profile fighter and, you know, huge controversy. So I believe 99.99% .99 of the world thinks I won, including myself. And like you said, besides three other people or maybe four other people. So... You know, I could be, I could wallow in my uh, crap or I could take it in stride and try to build off of it. And that's like my, that's literally my only option. And that's what I'm going to do. And that's what I've always done. And and that's just the way my life is. And, but that's cool because it makes me who I am, makes me a better person, makes me a better man. And it will make me in turn a better fighter, which uh, is the least important of the things to me, um, even though it's high on the list, but, uh, that's where I'm at right now. And, and I'm ready to just move forward. And I just want to, man, I just want to get back on the mats. Uh, my ankle's a little banged up, but I'm going to, I'm going to go train right after this. And, you know, I think I'm the best fighter I've ever been and I'm in the best headspace I've ever been in. So I can only see myself getting better from here. Um, is this one of those things where like it, it kind of flows Maybe on Saturday you were in shock and then you're upset and then you're like, have you, f oh, have, yeah. has it sure. been a range of emotions and, and where would you say you're oh, at yeah. right now? I would say that like I'm pretty uh, neutral right now. Like I'm not too upset and I'm not too um, high or low, but definitely Saturday night, dude, couldn't come near me. Really? Hotel room. You know, all my friends and family were in there. I was, I was, excuse my language, I was flipping out. Um, and yeah, I was pissed. I didn't want to come. I went in the shower. I didn't want to come out of the shower. You know, I felt like everyone was conspiring against me or the world. Or I was like, man, I'm still getting karma for all the, all the bad and crime that I've done. Um, but I can't look at it this way, that way, because this could have been better than winning. If I won, they, the narrative would be flipped. Oh, you beat a, you beat a, you beat Patty. He sucks. They would flip the narrative somehow on me. So the fact that I'm getting more attention now than I've ever gotten before is a good thing. And, you know, I'm getting bombarded with uh, interview requests. I just got off the Bruce Buffer one. I just did one with Mike Vaughn. I'm with you now. I have, uh, Bisping podcast tomorrow or Friday. I got Brett Akimoto, you know, so I'm getting, you know, Brett Akimoto never asked me for an interview before. Bisping never asked me to come on the show before. I'm on your show, which is the, or one of the biggest. So this it's good, man. And I believe, you know, I spoke to Dana after the fight and he was like, look, unfortunately the three people that matter most didn't think you won. And, but you came out with the best possible outcome coming off a loss, which is true in a sense. Um, so he said, you know, we support you and we're going to got your back. And um, so that obviously makes me feel a little better. I mean, words are words, but I, you know, need to have faith in what he says, obviously. And, uh, you know, that's where I'm at. And that's, that's what I'm going to do. I've been dealt uh, <laughs> way worse cards before. And uh, I got through it, and that's the only thing I could do, man, is just keep moving forward, bro. And, and just curious, and uh, if you don't want to answer, I understand, but uh, do you get paid like show win? And if you do, are they going to pay you win based off what Dana just said to you? Because that, to me, is the, the biggest crime in all of this. You were robbed of 50% of your purse if you are paid show win model. Yeah, I'm paid show win. Um, I didn't get my, my win money. Um, 
So what does that mean? We we got your back. I mean, I'm not trying to cause a thing here, but like, I don't, you know what I mean? I don't know. Man. I really don't know. And I'm not trying to put words in his mouth or, yeah. or, or saying that he's going to do something for me. That's not going to happen or that he's not going to do anything for me. Um, you know, I think that it, after this, my stock went up big time and you know, I'll, my fights come going forward will be looked at more. So it, you know, it is what it is. I signed up for this, obviously, knowing that, you know, if it was any other fighter, if I win or lose, I would, you know, I get my show money and my win money, or I don't get my, get my win money. So, you know, I lost and the, the loss is on my record. There's an L next to my name when, when you look at my fight against Patty Pivlet. So uh, that was the contract I signed. And I think, you know, I didn't get, I don't get my win money when, when you lose. You don't get your win money when you lose. So, I um, mean, some instances you do. Obviously. Alex Morono did. Um, yeah. Yeah, he did. But he didn't win that fight. Yeah. Can I, I? I don't mean to to correct you, and I'm not trying to get, make you more mad. You know, I have your back here. You yeah. didn't lose that fight, and it, it annoys me to hear you say that you lost. You did not lose that fight. Three people thought. Well, you know, on I mean? paper. Yeah, what? I, I know. I get it. Fuck that paper. Trust me, man. You didn't I lose that I, fight. I think I. I think I won too, and so does everyone else that I spoke to, including the past guys that I just got off interviews with. Buffer thought I won. You know, in the cage, Joe Rogan was like, "You got this." You know, he thought I won. And we saw his reaction, you know, on camera after. So I mean, um, it is what it is, man. And I wish that I could do more. And I, yeah, of course, I wish I can get my win money. But you know what? Money is not. The only difference between winning that money and not winning that money is that I would just have a little extra money in my checking account. And I don't need that. I'm not hurting for money. I own a house. I own everything I need. I have an income from other sources. So like for me, this was never, this fight wasn't about the money. Mm. Like I didn't, I wasn't fighting for a check this fight. You know, I have everything I need plus more. And, you know, I, uh, this was just a, make my platform bigger and which it did and, and move on to the next level, which unfortunately, you know, I don't know what's going to happen now. Maybe I'll get a, hopefully I'll get a big fight. You know, maybe I will, you never, you know, this sport guy gets injured, you step in and win. And then next thing you know, you're ranked. So anything could happen. And I just have to have faith that something like that will happen. And, you know, so, you know, I got nothing, I love the U I love fighting for the UFC, man. The way they handle things, the way they do everything. I love competing. I love MMA. I love fighting. Win or lose today, three, four days later, I would feel the same way. I would just have a couple extra zeros in my bank account, I guess. Um, but that doesn't change me. That's not it will never change me as a man, as a brother, as a husband, as a son, as a friend. And so I don't give, you know, it is what it is. Obviously it would be nice to have the extra the other money, but yeah, yeah. you know, I just got to take it for what it is and move forward, man. It's the only thing I can do at this point. Can I ask, um, usually when there's like a controversy as far as scorecards, you know, so, like, like the main event, some people thought Jan won, some people thought Magomed, some people thought it was a draw. It's usually somewhat split. It's very rare that it's unanimous, like we saw the MMA yeah. media scores. As you said, it's, this is this is very very rare, and so I'm just curious. Uh, do you think that there was any foul play involved? Like obviously the the word rig, this that. Like do you, do you believe in that stuff, or do you think it's just some weird thing that three dudes who happen to be the most important guys in this situation didn't see it, like the entire world did? I believe that the judges were swayed by the crowd. John McCarthy spoke about his son. Mm -hmm. He was like, you got that one wrong. And then I think his son said something like, oh, yeah, the crowd, like, the oohs and the ahs. And, I mean, they were all, they were all over the place, the judges. Um, right. Oh, Dana said I threw the last round, which was my only regret in the fight, that I didn't go for it a little more in the last round. But two of the judges gave me the last round. <laughs> and I lost – all the first round on all the judges scorecards, right. but that was the most decisive round for me. Right. So I don't know what these people were thinking or doing. I don't know what they were looking at. I don't know why they were so blind or swayed by outside 
variables. So, and then you got Patty who said, oh, I coasted the third round. Yeah, you did. Because he thought he won the first two. So it's like everyone was. Right. When I when the fight was over, I was like, I, and then they said, when Bruce Buffer said unanimous, I was like, all right, I won. 49 29. Okay, I'll take that. Or if it was a split decision. So it was like, I was, uh, it, the only word to explain it was bizarre. Right. Just a very bizarre situation. And there was no saying what the judges were thinking or, or doing that night. And, do I think that it was rigged? I don't, I can't, I don't think so, man. I can't sit here and say that, that somehow it was rigged. Like I really, I need to have more faith in the system because going forward, you know, then you got this guy Crosby and some of the other judges who have been scrutinized before, like were all those other fights that he was tied to that had terrible decisions were those rigged also so he's been just rigging fights this whole time or is he just an idiot and he's biased and or or is swayed by other things or he's admitted i think on with sonin that he goes off his own criteria so i mean no i can sit here and say that it was rigged because you know what man it doesn't come out in the wash it comes out in the rinse mm-hmm. This is all the wash, man. So I'm waiting for the rinse. The cycle has to has to go through, and I bl- I know either way I'll be standing on top, and I'll be fine with what happens in my life. So you know, this is something I wanted to do since I was a child: fight in the UFC, be the best, you know, be a, a superstar or whatever you want to call it. And this is the way. That I'm gonna get there, so you know I gotta take it in stride and and just uh, just keep going forward. It's all it's literally the only thing I can do. <laughs> How would you score the fight? When I was done with the fight, I I gave myself thirty twenty seven. Looking back at it, I could see twenty nine twenty eight. I mean, looking at it now, twenty nine twenty eight. I don't see how I lost two rounds. Would you give yourself first and or, third? I, th- man, I thought the second. Round, I I thought the second too, but I, w- when I you say won. you could see twenty nine, twenty eight, which round could you see maybe I going? I mean, the only one that I could see them saying that I lost was maybe the second round, because so I clearly controlled the third. He did you know, Dana, uh, people said like, "Oh, you didn't do anything in the third round." Dana said it, and then looking back at it, I still regret what I did in the third round. So I'm not. I think um I agree with people that I could have done more, but I still controlled the whole third round. Mm-hmm. I was the one whole, you know, he didn't, if I didn't do anything, he did absolutely nothing. Right. The third round. He just laid there and was throwing shots like this behind my ear, you know, around my head. I'm kneeing his leg. I'm changing levels. I'm going for takedowns. I had his back standing at one point, not, you know, not hooks in, but, you know, then he went for a takedown. I reversed it and ended up getting, taking him down. I lost position. So he had a control for 20 or 30 seconds of the last round. How do I lose that round? I don't know. Um, I was pushing the action by trying to take him down and holding him there. He just laid there. And he, then he goes and says, I coasted the third round and the judges gave me the third round. So yeah, it's, it's just super perplexing. And I talked to all the other experts and they said, I win. So why used and <laughs> why did you fight like that in the third, when you were having so much success in the first and second? Dude, my ankle is banged up right now. Oh, was I it? sprained my ankle really badly in my in the Grant Dawson fight, and I've been dealing with it since then. When I fought Leo Santos, my ankle wasn't good until three weeks before the fight. I was really having to be careful. I couldn't throw kicks. I had to wear an ankle brace. I was wearing wrestling shoes and sparring, you know, so I didn't roll it. And I was calf kicking Patty in the first round or two rounds, and I couldn't even walk after you know, so in the third round, it stiffened up on me, and it's my back leg, my power leg. So s- balancing on it, I could mm. I can't put my foot down like flat without being in extreme pain. I have to just be on my toes, but pushing off of it super hard. And I was in a lot of pain. So I'm like, all right, 
I'll just hold, I'll just try to take him down. And that's what I was going for. Fortunately, I didn't really get a clean takedown and get control, which was on my, which was my fault. Uh, I don't know. I know, I believe I'm levels, you know, I was a level, at least one level above Patty. And I know there's levels way past me. And that was fine. Because I was ready to admit that even if I got the W. And I know, like, you know, I still have a lot of work to do. And But, like, I look, I take each fight individually and I just have to win those fights. I don't have to win all the fights at once. So, you know, I got to work on some things. And that was why I did that in the third round. I was in a lot of pain. And um, I just felt like I was better than him everywhere. So if it was against the cage, I, the judges gave me that round. So yeah. I, obviously I did what I had to do in that round. So what the fuck? I don't even know what to say. Uh, your your left hand was money. I mean, it was just landing repeatedly. Yeah. The striking was tremendous. Were you surprised at how much success you were having in the first two rounds? Like, no. You were, you... I knew I was a better okay. stand-up guy than him. I knew that he he, he uh, gets wild and his chin's up. And if I just threw my left hand out there, it was going to land. And I landed the right hand. I landed the left hook. I, I should have added, you know, I should have been three, four, or five punches, not just two or three um but it's it's over and you know like i said i regret some things those that's the other thing i regret is just not opening up a bit more and that's something i've always been critical about myself in fights i need to you know just go in there and believe in myself a little more and uh, i know i have it in me i do it in the gym and uh i have fleeting moments of that min of it in fights and uh, I know I can, I know I can still put more together. And so my next one, you know, is my most important one and, and I'll make it hopefully my best one. So I just have to have faith and keep working hard. I'm going to, the, you know, I'm going to the gym right after this, man. I'm going to go do something right now. I got to, well, that's all I can do is mm. be healthy and, and smart and consistent and, and go. I'm on, a, I'm already back on my diet. I eat like crap for the first two days. I'm not getting fat. I do not want to. I want to fight in two, three months from now. You know, have Christmas and Hanukkah, and uh, do get back in there, man, and, and just show the world like what I've always done. And that's work, hard, have faith, work hard, and persevere, and go. You know, that's just my story, bro. Just the way it's going to be for me, and I don't care. So I know that. I know deep down that I won. I know Patty deep down knows that I won. There's no way that he watches this fight and says I won. It's impossible, especially when the whole world is yelling that he lost. So I just got to hold my head high and uh, do what I do best. What, 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 what do you make of how he handled it in the aftermath, in, in the cage afterward? Like, Because it doesn't seem like he thinks, at least what he's saying and how he's acting, that he thinks well, you won. Of course he's not. I mean, there's a way you could say it. Like, we've seen guys of get... Course. Look at all, like, the best of examples, O'Malley and Jan. Yeah. yeah. O'Malley was forthcoming, man. I don't know. Yeah. I don't rewatch the fight, man. That was close. He was so humble about it. And, uh... But, you know, Patty's got to keep the circus going. He's got to just keep that persona going. And I understand. I like him as a person. He's a sweetheart. He was very nice to me, cordial. He was hugging me. We were laughing. So I don't have anything against him. It's not him. He didn't, I don't, you know, like, he's not Doug Crosby or whoever, you know, the other two guys. Like, so I think that he's going to just, he's got to keep up the shtick and do what he does. And that's where he, that's why he is right now where he is right now and you know he's a he's a professional at what he does social media and persona you know he'll probably be in wwe or aw or something like that eventually you know and uh but gr good for him man i wish him all the best i don't wish anyone in this sport anything bad i watch these guys new guys come in guys that have been around for a little while guys that have been around for a long time and, and i and i i sympathize with everyone man when i see guys lose i'm i'm like damn 
So I know what it feels like. And when I see you guys win, I'm like, good for them, man. They deserve it because I know what it takes to get in there and do what we do every day. There's no seasons. There's no days off. Christmas, Thanksgiving, we're training. And, you know, I see guys come in, they go 0-2, 0-3, and, and, and they're gone. And I, I, I'm like, Fuck. you know, I'm just grateful that, that, you know, that was almost me at one point. So I know what it's like, man, wondering, am I going to get a new, another contract? I know what that feels like. And, you know, when I see guys that are, you know, they get right there or they get right there and then their careers die out. I'm like, fuck, man, I feel terrible for these guys. Or when I see guys, you know, that don't come, you know, uh, they don't pan out to what people believe they were going to be. Kills me, dude. And I'm like, because this sport is so, man, it chews us up and spits us out, dude. We're racehorses. And we only have so much time. We got to make the best of it. So, you know, I don't wish anyone ill will. I don't, I don't want to ever put that energy out there and just because it's just not right, man. Like, whatever. If, if I'm ranting now. No, no, I appreciate everything you're saying. And you're handling this really, really well. And, and uh, I, I, I agree. You're, you're, making a lot of new fans for yourself. And I know you wish that it wasn't under these circumstances. If, uh, if the UFC called you and said, all right, we're going to make it right by you. We want to make it right by you. What do you want? What do you want to do now? What do you want next? What, what is your response? I mean, I would love to fight Patty in London. Even though, like, I thought the cards were stacked against me in Vegas. Like, right. You know, going over there is going to be a whole new ball game. But I don't care because I don't really have anything to lose. I'll wake up the next day and life will go on. And no one really in a week from now, no one's going to give a crap about this anyways. So yeah, that would be perfect world. I mean, I don't, I don't really know. You know, um, obviously they're, they're not going to give me a top 15 guy, obviously. So but you never know, man, in this sport is instant. Things change instantly. And, you know, maybe I'll fill in. Maybe someone falls out, top 15 fighter. And they, oh, give it to Jared. You never know, man. I'm going to stay ready. I'm going to stay low, in, you know, my weight. And maybe I can jump into a fight that will propel me back to where I believe I should be or want to be. So, I mean, you see it all the time, man. The yeah. sport is, it's not linear whatsoever. So, I mean, look at Alequinta. Guy made history, jumped into a title fight on what two or three days' notice or whatever it was. You know, things change so fast, man. So, like, I know something's gonna happen, and you know, I know God and the universe is for me. So, by the way, have just re- have you or your management, your representatives, have they asked for this? Like in the conversations that you've had since the fight, like, yo, let's let's run this back. Um, not, I don't think like formally, I don't think Ali's, my manager has said anything like to Dana or anyone, okay. you know, it's only, it's also only been three days. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. So, I mean, you know, we'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks, but like, you know, I've never said no to anyone. So whatever comes my way is what I'm supposed to do. And that's what I'll do. Are you, uh. Are you confident? Like, do you think there's a shot? I I personally think that this would be a bigger fight than any top 15 guy just because of the story. I mean, the magnitude. I mean, yeah, that, yeah. that tweet that you posted on Saturday, I think has like 65,000 likes. It's insane. Um, do you think this has a shot? Like, do you think you have a shot of getting the rematch? I think it's anything's possible. Yeah. I think it makes sense, at least for me. <laughs> but I also think it makes sense for him because obviously – Everyone's going to, everyone's saying like, you didn't win. So why don't you prove it and fight me and it'll be on your turf, on your terms in London, where everyone is rooting for you, where everything is going to be on your side. And then, you know, the, he's fought me already. So he knows what he's getting in there with, in a sense. And instead of 
giving him a a top 15 guy. Just look at that top 15 right now. Everyone is a killer. Mm. Is that where is that where they're gonna go after the performance you had against me? Give him a little more practice, a little more experience. Throw him back in there with me. And let's let's see where he's really at. You know? So I mean, I think it would be awesome. I think it, it makes sense and to a certain degree. So I mean, I guess we'll have to see. Uh, last thing for you, and again, I really appreciate this, and and it it is sort of along what you were uh, talking about at the start. My friend uh, Chael Sonnen loves to repeat the line that the definition of insanity is doing something over and over and over again. And I think I might have even botched that, but he always repeats that line. And and I'm just wondering for you and your mental health and your sanity. You just ran through all the interviews that you're doing about this. That doesn't sound very fun. How are you dealing with all of that? Like you're you're now going to have to, you know, I hope not answer the same questions every time, but uh, it's one thing to go through a media tour when you win. And I, and I know that everyone's showing you love and everyone who you're talking to probably scored it for you and they're all coming from a good place. But is there a part of you that's dreading all of these interviews and just can't wait for all of this go away? Like how, how are you going to tackle this mentally? I mean, I was getting, you know, messages and texts and calls like nonstop. Oh, can you do this interview? Do this. And I'm like, dude, leave me alone. <laughs> but I can't wait. I got to do it now. So I understand it's part of it. And I got to get my, my side out there. And it's a way to capture more of an audience. So I'm fine with it. This okay. isn't really like, this is like uh, what we, what every fighter wants, right? Is to be in the light. So I got to just take it for what it is. And that, man, I do so much to keep my head on track, but there's, there's no way that doing interview with Ariel Hawani or Brad Akimoto or, or Buffer or Bisping is going to throw me off, you know? So I have to take advantage of, of this while I can, and it's only going to do good for me. So that's why I'm on this, doing this with you right now. And, you know, it's not really like, it's not, it doesn't really mess with me mentally. So. Okay. Well, I'm glad to hear that. It is annoying. It is annoying. <laughs> getting the same answers over and over saying, yeah, I believe I won. Yeah. yeah. These judges are blind, but you know, it is what it is. Well, you're handling it with class. I'm really sorry, man. I, I really do think it's the worst decision or one of top five. I don't remember ever seeing a decision where everyone, except for the three dudes, scored it in favor of the wrong. It's really mind-blowing, and I'm sorry you're on the receiving end of it, but you're handling it with class as expected. Tremendous fight. It was it was really something to watch. Like that first round, the, the, that left hand, I, I, I wish it didn't go down this way for you, but uh, much respect, and I hope that they do right by you, and I hope you get what you want and, and heal up soon. Obviously, the ankle is, is a pain in the butt, so uh, just, you know... Enjoy the the time off and all the interviews to come and the spotlight and and I hope this negative does turn into a positive for you. Thank you, Ariel. I appreciate it. All right, talk to you soon. There he is, Jared Gordon, uh, the man who the vast majority of uh, the world. I think it's actually five people who scored it for Patty. It was the three judges, Patty and Mysterious Frank. I was told Frank thought it was thirty twenty seven. Patty, is that accurate? 